join us. It's really exciting to see where everybody's coming from, from, from New York to uh, California to Hawaii. Actually, we have people joining us from Hawaii. Um, I hope it's a little bit warmer there in Hawaii than it is here in Iowa. Uh, from North Dakota all the way down to Puerto Rico. It's just really exciting to see the diversity of places that people are, are joining us with uh, from today. From 30 different states and, and colleges. I was looking over the list of colleges that people are joining us from. So Michigan State, go green. Oh, so hang on a second. So that's my background. Um, so I've only been here at Iowa State for about uh, 60 days now. And... Uh, but I came from Michigan State University, uh, where I was for the past 20 years. But I'm so excited to be here. I can tell you with confidence every day that I that I come to work, I learn more and more about this exciting place, the, the great faculty, the great students, the great staff, all the folks that we interact with. It's just been unbelievable for the past six days. And we have some of those folks here today uh, that are going to be sharing some of their experiences and wisdom about Iowa State. So. Um, Thanks for joining us today, and uh, what we're going to do is go around the room and just have some quick introductions from our faculty and students, and then I think we're just going to open up for questions uh, about the college, about our profession, about <clears throat> Iowa, um, whatever, whatever you want to ask us, we're here to answer those questions today. So thanks again for joining us. So I'm going to turn it over to Gracie here. <laughs> I'm Graciela Orantes. I'm a third year at the uh, College of Veterinary Medicine. Um, I come from Chicago, Illinois, and uh, I did an undergrad at West Point. Hi, um, I am Dr. Tipaswamy. Um, I will be teaching veterinary anatomy in the first semester. I graduated uh, in 1985 and did master's in veterinary anatomy. And then in, um, uh, I practiced uh, for about 10 years before I took active research. Um, so I moved to England from India, so where I graduated from, uh, for doing my PhD that was supported by British Council, um, so what is called the Commonwealth uh, Fellowship. Uh, so I did my PhD in 1998, so in three years. So in England, so we can do PhD in three years, there is no coursework. And then uh, I was uh, uh, working as a faculty uh, for almost 18 years in England. And I moved to Iowa State University um, in 2012. So I am six years old here. Um, so it is a great place. So if you um, ask me why I should move here, so probably that is one of the questions. If you don't have any questions, you can ask me. I can answer, answer that later. Uh, I am also doing research in epilepsy. So that is some uh, something you guys might want to do uh, a summer internship or summer research activity. Um, yes, yeah, so I have a um, big group, um, so it is funded by an edge. So I can talk about that later if you have any questions. Thank you. Oh, my name is Alex Ramirez. I'm a faculty member here at the college. Um, I'm originally from Mexico, so believe me, you, you can tolerate the weather, <laughs> get used to it, so and love it here. So I came to Iowa State, did my undergraduate, did my veterinary school here at Iowa State, and then was in private practice for 11 years, uh, came back, part of the faculty in my area that I work is primarily in the clinical swine medicine. My name is Karen Augsburg. I'm a professor in internal medicine here at ISU. I'm from Switzerland and I did my vet school there um, and then um, moved around a bit. I actually did my residency and internship in the States and then going back to Switzerland, doing a PhD and having my first faculty job at the Royal Vet College in London, which um, I had for about 11 years. I was doing a lot of clinical trial research there um, and then was recruited here um, for a really, really good job. And um, that's only just been for two years. I love it. Um, it's, it's absolutely amazing. The people here are amazing. The students are amazing. Um, and um, I can do even more clinical research, which is my love. And so hopefully you will all um, you know, apply here and um, lots of you will come here and we can do some research together. Excellent. So, so what we're going to do, I think hopefully we have some questions uh, coming in from, from our students. Um, if not, we'll just keep talking. <laughs> um, I, as you probably know, veterinarians talk a lot, right? So, <laughs> can, so, uh, so the, anytime you have questions, just let us know. Otherwise, we'll, we'll just okay. keep doing some things. I've got one when you're ready. They're coming in. All right. Let's, let's hear this first so, question. So the first question is about um, kind of what makes Iowa State unique. 
what helps our students become, you know, practice or career ready. Um, can you tell us a little bit about those experiences, maybe from, you know, the faculty side as well as the student side? Um, so yeah. Who wants to tackle that one? Alex. I'll be glad. Okay. To <laughs> sure, please. Yes. So, so I think there's a lot of things that make Iowa State unique. One, I can definitely say the interaction between faculty and students is great. Um, so I think we love our students. Uh, we work with them a lot, so there's a lot of collegiality. Um, and as a veterinarian, I think one of our strengths has always been that we are trained in more than one species. Um, I think that really challenges. We all are aware about diversity, uh, and I think diversity in education and species is important. And one of the key things for Iowa State is, I think we prepare students in small animal just as well as anyone else, but we also have the advantage that we have a very good food animal program. And by food animal, uh, it's comprehensive. Uh, pigs, I work with pigs. I think if you have a great program, obviously pigs, but also dairy, swine, small ruminants. Um, so I think our students who are well prepared here get out there in the field and are well prepared for any job, regardless of where that career path will take them. And then from the student perspective, um, I really appreciate the broad um, broadness of our education. Um, I, like I said, I'm from Chicago, zero experience with cows, pigs, horses, or anything like that. And I can truly say that at this point in my um, education, I'm not like terrified about it or any of the animals are more like willing to be hands on, try something new. The teachers um, have always answered questions without making me feel dumb. I mean, it's just, they're very open um, to do that. Um, as someone who really loves veterinary medicine and I understand like, or see the global impact that veterinary medicine has not only for animals, but for people and environment, it's good to have that diversity and just be able to like apply general concepts from one species to another um, because truly in veterinary medicine or the way in just from interacting and talking to staff and faculty here is you don't know where you're going to be in 10 years. You can start off in one field and end up being in a different field in five to 10 years. And so having that broad education gives you the confidence to tackle whatever challenge is ahead. So um, that's why I really appreciate the diversity um, and within, their, within the students too. Yeah, and, and I would add to that that in the clinical years, um, which is a little bit ahead, of course, but it goes quick, you'll see. Um, it's, it's really nice that we have um, still really small student groups um, with um, relation to faculty numbers. And so it's a, it's a really close one-to-one -one education on the clinical floor, which I think is, is different to a lot of other programs. And, and it does um, you know, give you that edge of being able to actually do it hands-on and being taught in a way that you know, you're not being rushed. You actually have time to be taught and, and really you know, getting there. Um, and so I think the program really does actually prepare you for day one much more than others. And to add to that, as a, I'm a SAVMA president, so that's the student of American Veterinary American, <laughs> American Medical Association is kind of like today. Um, so I get to work a lot with the um, faculty members. And, and like you were saying, it's just there is that interaction with uh, faculty members. I've, I've worked with SAFMA since my first year, and the deans and the staff have always wanted, like, it's always about improving the student learning experiences. And even like we have lots of student clubs where we do a lot of wet labs, which sometimes can be a little overwhelming to fit in within our normal schedule. But um, in my first year, I helped with the first horse castration. I mean, I didn't do the castration part, but like learning how to handle the horse and do the anesthesia monitoring, um, a feral cat. Um, surgeries within the first two years. So when you get to clinical year, fourth year, it's not your first time touching an animal. We, we have that experience built in throughout our, our curriculum. Again, to add um, what uh, Gracie uh, told us about uh, global impact of our college, I will give you an example. Uh, when I was a student in 1980, so we had a textbook, I mean, still we have a great textbook, histology textbook, that is uh, Delman histology textbook. It is a worldwide textbook and coming from uh, somewhere in the southern part of India, read about, you know, Delman textbook, histology textbook, uh, aims 
College of Veterinary Medicine, uh, College of uh, Veterinary Medicine, uh, Ames. We never knew where that Ames was, <laughs> you know. Um, and then when I moved to England, um, there were two clinicians who had, who had visited Ames for um, taking some board exams and also for training purpose. So coming from England to Ames at that time, uh, I, I didn't know that there was a veterinary school in, in Ames. <laughs> Um, so when I applied for this job, someone invited me to apply for this job and I was inquiring about a couple of my colleagues there. Do you know anything? Oh, that, that, is, that is a great place. And, uh, but they didn't tell me about the weather though. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it is, it is really, uh, this college has made a huge uh, global impact. Uh, I am proud to be part of uh, uh, faculty here. So, so I think one of the things you've heard is that uh, that um, the ability to kind of get that comparative medicine education here uh, is, is one of the key components of what we do here. But there are also opportunities to get advanced education in certain in areas that you're interested in. So such as swine medicine or oncology or internal medicine, areas that you have a lot of interest in and want to expand in. But the power of that comparative education uh, can't be overstated. Because as many people stay here, you never know where your career is going to go. And, and so having that comparative background really can be powerful as your career progresses. So great. Next, next Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a question about the first year experience. Okay. Um, essentially, so it's kind of a two part question comboing a couple of different students. Um, so what is that first year like? What's kind of that mad, you know, life like that first year? Um, and then what are maybe some challenges that first year students face and maybe some advice you know on conquering the adjustment from undergrad or professional life to professional school so <laughs> <laughs> so i need a caveat that i'm a non-traditional student so um i was actually in military service before i came to iowa state so my transition may not be as similar to a lot of the students um, but I will tell you that it was actually not, it was, it was challenging in the aspect that I hadn't been in school in seven years and like learning how to study again, but it wasn't, it wasn't challenging as far as the environment. The first day that I got here, it was, it was kind of weird. It was like, everybody was just so nice and helpful and welcoming. And I was like, where, where am I? I'm supposed to be scared at some point. And that didn't really happen. Um, anatomy is always our first exam. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to face here. No, I'm just <laughs> um, so anatomy, it's, it's fun because I feel like anatomy ends up being where you make some of your closest friends. Ironically, I've, I've looked at my classmates and it's our lab partners that we make most of our friends and that's because you spend hours in anatomy trying to remember every muscle and nerve and everything like that. But um, the first semester they actually now be in the third year and having perspective, first semester seems overwhelming, like you don't have enough time. But now as a third year, I wish I had the first semester schedule because they do set you up for success. Um, they, they set up you up with a freshman orientation course, which introduces you to the school and the university um, and any issues that you may be having during the first semester. There's amazing resources here. We actually just got a, a counselor in school. Um, something that the university staff and administration and students worked for really hard in the last year. Um, so they have lots of resources there. Actually, Dr. Swami has a very good uh, tutoring program. So most of our most of our teachers have a tutoring program. Um, so after the first exam, if even if you don't ask for assistance, um, the administration contacts you and it's like, hey, you know, we think that you you would benefit from this assistance or, or if you need help with studying. So it, it actually works very well. Also, as a staff of president, I helped set up, continue the tradition that we've had, which is where we pair a second year with the first year student. And that's been super helpful. I know that when I was the first year, whenever I got overwhelmed or started feeling what we call imposter syndrome, like, what am I doing here? Um, I would text my contact and be like, oh my God, I just failed this exam. And she'd be like, it's fine. Everybody fails that first exam. You'll do well in the second one. Or they'll give me tips about how to study better or things like that. So you have that contact. 
and then in the clubs that you're part of, then you have that support from upperclassmen as well. So I kind of droned on there. I apologize, but no, that's perfect. Hopefully that helped a little bit. Absolutely. Excellent. So <clears throat> while we're waiting for our next question, just a fun fact maybe that I'll share with you. If you didn't know, um, Iowa State University is the oldest veterinary school in the country, and it was actually uh, established in 1879. So something that we're really proud about is that this is the first College of Veterinary Medicine in the United States. So something something to think about. Yeah, awesome. Um, so the next question is about research. So somebody heard you know about your guys' research and kind of wants to know a little bit more. Can you talk about that summer research program and and kind of what opportunities we have for students to get involved? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've uh, only been here for two years, um, but for these two years, I've had summer students um, that very successfully have gone through the program. Um, it's, it, um, it's a great way of um, trying to get um, to terms of what research is, whether it's something that you might like, um, but it's also a good way of teaching you, you know, to be disciplined, to be self-motivated, to, you know, not be um, afraid of failure. <laughs> all those sort of um, life lessons that you need, um, you know, for, for all sorts of things after as well. Um, it, it, it's um, usually what happens is that um, the students will approach um, some of the faculty if they're interested in doing this. Um, and, you know, we usually as faculty go out and, and sort of recruit a little bit as well. So we go and talk to people um, and say, hey, we're here, you know, we're looking for people who are interested. And then, of course, you know, you want to do something that you're interested in. So, you know, if, if small animal is your thing, um, then maybe you want to hook up with me and, and do something. So this is a, a 10 week program where um, there's, there's actually a lot of teaching involved as well. You'll get some basic research techniques um, and sort of um, a setup of how you perform, how you do research. Um, and you're gonna be guided through that. Um, and then you're gonna be thrown into a lab or thrown into the clinics or wherever that research happens. Um, and you're gonna be doing it and you're gonna be um, uh, producing a result in the end as well, which is um, a, a paper, which is um, in, in the two cases, in the two students that I had, um, was actually submitted in, and has been published as first authors for both of those, so very successfully. Um, and you will also do a poster um, that you will internally present at the research meeting here at ISU, where everybody else goes as well. The, um, the PhDs and the postdocs go as well, and all the faculty are there. And it's not as intimidating as it sounds. It's actually really fun. Um, it's amazing. Everybody's really nice and really positive, and and it's just a great day um, to to celebrate what everybody's achieved over the summer. Um, Besides, it's also good money. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a positive. Right? right. <laughs> so. Alex, you want to talk a little bit about the summer internship program that's through SMEC and yeah. also yeah. on the so, dairy side too? So yeah, so I would echo that same feeling. And I think there's, um, we have a lot of faculty here involved in research and, and you can get experiences anywhere from strictly bench top to all the way highly clinical field research. So, so we have the whole gamut. Um, from the food animal side, we also have a similar program also that you can spend the summer uh, working out. Uh, most of our, some of our, we have quite a few cases opportunities in the swine area uh, because we're in Iowa. And uh, we get students out there again for the 10, 10, 12 weeks and they're out there in the field doing field research with practitioners in the field working the barns. Um, and then they do the same thing. They prepare uh, papers and presentations for the for the annual meeting for the American Association of Swine Veterinarians. And Iowa State has been highly represented in in, in that competition, and we've we've done quite well uh, because of the highly practical and good research that's that's being done here at the university. Great. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions here about um, the kind of the makeup of our faculty members, but also of our student body. So can you talk a little bit about um, diversity and how that plays a role in our student body and our faculty? Sure, um, I'll tackle that one. So um, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, just a little bit about our class that just started here uh, in 2018. So that will be the class of, that graduates in 2022. So there's 157 students that, uh, that started uh, this year. Um, 
27 of those students actually are starting at the University of Nebraska. So we have a cooperative program with the uh, University of Nebraska at Lincoln, where about 25 to 27 students start there for their first two years. And then in their third year, um, they, they, uh, they then matriculate here and, and do their laboratory and clinical training here at, at Iowa State. So 157 students started this year. Um, um, 80, eight, about 85, 88% of them are, are female. So that's a trend that's across the United States. So, so a large proportion are female. Um, this year's class at Iowa State University is one of the most diverse. Um, in fact, there's 22 out of the 157 people that, that come from underrepresented uh, populations, and that's about double what it has been over the years. So, so that's something we're proud of and something that we're working really hard on is increasing the diversity of, of our veterinary students. Um, this, the class that came in this year represents or come from 25 different states across the United States and, and also three countries. I believe France and Guam and China are the, the countries that are represented in this, uh, in this, further adding to the diversity of our class. So quite the diversity in our students, um, both in where they come from and in their backgrounds. And, and they come from all different backgrounds educationally. So Gracie, you came from, from an Army background, yeah. which is awesome. And uh, so that, that further adds to the diversity uh, from the professional backgrounds that they bring. So, and, and anything else you want to add, Alex, from yeah. that, from Oasis, as far as the makeup of the class? No, I think, uh, you know, uh, the Midwest is not very diverse. Um, but I think it, we, we've been very aggressive about increasing that diversity. I think the other part from the faculty standpoint, um, it is my understanding we're one of the more diverse faculties mm -hmm. uh, from veterinary medicine. Um, and obviously faculty it's easier to attract people or students where we rely on those who accept um, here. But I think um, acceptance, I think it's been well accepted. Our students are well accepted and integrated. And the cool part is we just had international night um, a couple of weeks ago and it's just so it was kind of cool just to see the diversity within our faculty and staff and our graduate students. Um, I know we're working on diversity within like the vet med students, but we have a diversity within our faculty and staff. We definitely do. It's very rich and we definitely appreciate it. And the diversity extends across faculty, staff, but also our graduate student population mm -hmm. here, which is, which is large. And they come from a very diverse background, uh, uh, different cultures, different parts of the world, which further adds to our diversity here. Anybody else on that? All right, awesome. Great, okay. Uh, so going back a little bit to um, our teaching style and kind of more on the student experience, um, people are wondering kind of what are our classes like? Are they mostly hands-on, mostly lecture, a little bit of both? Can you guys talk about kind of how you teach the students or how you learn? Ooh, how I learned is different. <laughs> I think that um, a lot of it is lecture within the first three years. It, it kind of sucks, it kind of drags a little bit. Uh, by third year, you're like, okay, I want to get out of the classroom. But like I said, there's a lot of different, like you have the summer scholarship opportunities, um, working with professors, they're always open about you coming down and like joining rounds or helping in cases. I mean, even through my own pets, I've, the teachers have allowed me to be more involved in the care of my pets so I can learn in addition to what I'm doing in the classroom or through clubs and wet labs. So as far as the actual like classroom portion, yes, it's all lecture style, unfortunately. That's just, there's a lot of information you have to absorb. Um, but the fourth year, which I'm coming soon and I'm so excited, <laughs> is like um, we are in much smaller groups. Is it five to six? Yes and we're rotating in different clinics and shadowing them um, every two weeks. So that's something that I think is very unique. I'm very looking forward to that because that is much more my learning style is to have hands on. Um, but even when it's lecture style, the professors try really hard to be more engaging. Um, I'm also an IT person, so they have top hat, which makes lectures so much better because they throw out this question and you can answer anonymously and then you have an interaction with the student, with the teacher, because for some reason vet students are super introverts and don't want to talk in class. And so it just makes it much more interactive and break the monotony of just being there. Um, and then they present a lot of case studies actually. So it kind of makes it feel like you're in the clinic because you're working with the teacher in um, doing your diagnosis and differentials. So um, that's also pretty cool. Great. Uh, yes. I might add um, student clubs. 
Yeah. Um, I think uh, we feel our student clubs are integral to our training of our veterinary students. Um, and one of the advantages is student clubs can dictate or direct what type of activities the students are interested in themselves and they organize. And in our clubs, there's, I don't know how many, but there's like 35, 36, 35, 36 clubs, and they're all very active. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of hands-on opportunities through the student club um, activities, which are really directed and designed by students to meet a lot of their needs that really help supplement, complement uh, their training. Yeah. And to add with that, I know that 35, 36 sounds overwhelming. I, every semester I'm in different clubs, so I get different experiences. And that's just the way that I decided to do it because I'm, I'm not just focused in one area. But then I have classmates that all they want to do is cats so they're in the that's the club that they're in in all four years so it's all about what experiences you want to get out of school and what you want to do so yeah and to add to that and maybe you can talk about that too is a junior surgery which they've sort of revamped quite a bit and um have put in a lot right to try and make it better for students um, and also not to obviously euthanize any animals um, which is important as well and so um, but it's really quite great isn't it because it's it's associated with the local shelters I will so, I would I'm glad you brought yeah. that up is um, we do we're, we're the third class that has had this program and so our I'm um, fall semester third year we have our surgery and then that's when we first actually get to do hands-on surgery but it's an amazing program because you not only do surgery but you're learning how to do primary care preventative care how to do post-operation care and like you are solely responsible for that patient the whole time that they're here at Iowa State so that's been a huge learning curve for me I've loved having it um, and, and the cooperation that we have with community shelters and the amount of pets that have been adopted by us has been great too. <laughs> but also seeing those pets get adopted and have a, have a good opportunity to get adopted because they've gotten all the preventative care because they've gotten spayed and neutered and makes them more adoptable is just great. Yes, and, and we also have a clinical skill center that mm -hmm. um, has been built up over the last couple of years, which is also quite amazing, I feel, um, which gives a lot of um, opportunity to train stuff, not on animals, but um, just to sort of <coughs> practice things before you go into clinics or just intermittently again and again, and it's almost almost all the time I think opens. So yeah we have access to so like yeah. <laughs> go and train and um, and you can also get help all the time and so um, that, that's also a really good resource which I think is um, is appropriate actually size wise for the student body that we have so it's not that it's completely crowded all the time it's actually really quite nice so you can go and actually train and, and learn. And to add a little bit about that my first year I went on uh, the Christian uh, veterinary trip to Nicaragua, so I was the first year, had absolutely no idea how to do a spay or neuter, and because of the clinical skills lab, I was able to go down there and practice on models on how I would do a spay and neuter so that I wasn't unprepared when I helped with that mission. So yeah, before exams and things like that, we go in there and practice a lot. And they have us uh, use that, practice a lot of suturing and things like that, so that when you're actually in the surgery, it decreases your time um, and makes it a lot more <laughs> successful. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so ready for the big question, Dr. Grims? Can you, can you talk about tuition uh, a little bit and a little bit then about scholarships as well? Sure. So if you come to Iowa State, your tuition is free. <laughs> oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> you guys are supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> no. so, um, so obviously tuition is, is, is a big deal, and the cost of education to, to go to veterinary medical school is, is a big deal and something we're very conscious about and understand that, uh, that students who are thinking about going to veterinary medicine need to be aware of. So, so the good news at Iowa State is that, um, is that we have uh, a relatively low tuition when you compare it to all the, the veterinary schools across the United States. In fact, we're, we're in the lower third for both in-state and out-of-state tuition. Um, so that's a, that's a great thing, um, and we work hard to make sure that that tuition stays um, at that lower level. Um, the other thing that we are working really hard on is, is providing uh, other resources to offset that cost of education, so scholarships, okay? And in fact, um, I just looked this up today because I wanted to make sure that I was accurate in it. Um, this last year, we provided uh, across all four years 
$2.1 million in scholarships or aid to offset the cost of, of our students' education. And we're working hard to increase that um, through development, through fundraising, and through other uh, looking at other opportunities. Because we understand how important or how much of a, a barrier that, that cost of education can be. So we're proud of the fact that we've been able to keep our education, educational costs low. Uh, we're also equally proud that we're working hard uh, to raise money to further offset that, that cost of that education. So, um, so it says over $840,000, but you know, it's yeah. really 1.2 million. I gotta change yeah. that slide yeah. now, Dr. Griggs. <laughs> <laughs> so great question, thank yeah. you. Okay, so um, here's a question that is, uh, when will our students start, our, our applicants start finding out about, um, about their status? When do they know if they get in? Dr. Ramirez, you know, right? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Trick question. So it's February yeah. four, or February 15th. So yeah. right around mid or yeah, right around mid February, you'll know if you've been um, offered a position, um, you've been placed on our wait list, or if your application has been declined. So, uh, Gracie, do you want to talk a little bit about that acceptance letter? <laughs> or a phone call or an email or whatever it was? Well, again, mine was a non-traditional. I was actually uh, overseas in a deployment. So I found out through signing into the application portal. And I had a friend read my acceptance okay. letter because I was too afraid to look. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so my friend let me know. And I was, it was super excited. So it was great. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will all be very excited and anxiously waiting for it. But it's, it, it was time flies. <laughs> so sure, it's live. I can't even believe I'm a third year right now. So, <laughs> so, so another fun fact is, and maybe this is, it's not necessarily a fun fact, but it's an important fact, and and that's to know that Iowa State College of Veterinary Medicine is fully accredited university, uh, and we're accredited by the AVMA Council on Research, which is our accrediting body. In fact, we just went through accreditation a year ago, about this time, and. Uh, Dr. Ramirez, correct me if I'm wrong, but we passed with flying colors. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. so, so what that tells you is that according to our accrediting body, which accredits all colleges of veterinary medicine in, in North America, uh, we are doing the things to, to educate students uh, to the best of our ability and, 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 and create those day one ready veterinarians. So something important that you need to understand that we are a fully accredited and recently accredited college of veterinary medicine, or re-accredited, I should say. Very cool. Questions. Okay, so we've got a question about, um, and we talked, touched on it a little bit, but maybe we can elaborate on um, about how much faculty members are involved um, kind of with mentoring students. Um, do you get a faculty advisor, oh, yeah. all of that kind of stuff? Um, we do. Uh, if they're in, as soon as we get here, we have a three-day orientation, and at the end of the three-day orientation, you've already been paired up with a faculty member. Um, so that's actually an amazing program because um, as a student every time you have like important decisions like right now for me it's like well what am I going to track what are my clinical rotations I have a faculty member to go talk to or if it's like midterms and finals um, and I'm concerned about something I have a faculty member to talk to or that faculty member can vouch for me um, in any ways I know I've talked to my advisor and mentor um, when I've had to maybe change my finals or whether I can do finals and they help me navigate with OASA um, about different things. So that partnership's awesome. And they leave you goodies during uh, during finals weeks. So that's always fun to have that or just a reminder that, you know what, in all honesty, that school is a very small portion of our Bentley career and we're going to make it or just even hear their stories when they're like, you know, I failed Durham exam as well, or right? I wasn't really good at this exam. Then you can be like, okay, I really admire this person so I can get through it as well. So it's it's actually a really awesome program that we have. So I don't know if you guys have anything to share. Yeah, no, it's the same. I think that we get assigned. I think uh, uh, we don't have official advisors from the context that students don't have to get the faculty to approve things. Uh, but we're more of uh, peers, mm -hmm. colleagues that can help you yeah. uh, to the extent that, that you know students want that help. Right. Um, and then also, uh, it's helpful because if you do make contacts with other faculty, I think everyone is willing to provide that mentorship and guidance. Um, you know, you don't have to stick to one person that's assigned. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I think um, one of the powerful things that I saw at Michigan State, and I'm seeing the same thing here, is that that faculty um, are generally uh, generally want students to succeed, so they're always open to mentoring folks informally as well as formally. And so, so, so really, it, it's sometimes it's up to students just to go out and seek out faculty, and the faculty are there to help them. Um, and, and I know at Michigan State, I always had an open door policy, and I still have that open door policy here at, at Iowa State. Because I want students to come in and talk to me and ask questions. And I don't care if they're talking about veterinary medicine or if they're talking about football or if they're talking about the weather. It doesn't really matter. Um, uh, that's part of that mentorship relationship. And again, that, that was a, a strong component of our program at Michigan State when I was there. And I see it equally here at Iowa State University. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about um, student welfare? So whether that's kind of school life or work life balance, um, what have we been doing around here to kind of promote that student welfare? Uh, so. Good, yeah. So uh, obviously, student welfare is, is very important uh, from many different perspectives. Um, I think, uh, you know, we, we address in multiple ways. We have resources uh, from the university standpoint. Uh, but also, Gracie mentioned, um, you know, starting this year, we actually have two uh, counselors here on site. Uh, they split their time, uh, but they're available to students at all times, you know, uh, to, to meet some of their needs. Um, and then uh, one of the cool things that also just got developed here recently is we do have a little gym uh, that's also part here um, that our students now have access to. So in between things, faculty, staff, um, you know, can go and exercise um, in, in, our, in our gym there and get some of that mental, you know, stress off that you need to uh, to help out. Um, and then we have just the, the, the regular resources on campus. You know, we have some help. We've got all kinds of things uh, that are readily available to help. Services. Yeah, we have financial services. Um, all those resources are readily available and students kind of are made aware of those at all times. That those resources can be utilized at any time. In addition, SAFMA is also a big proponent of student wellness. So we have a uh, recreation and stress relief uh, group that always sets up uh, different activities. Um, we In Halloween, we had a trick-or-treat. So there was like 30 staff uh, and faculty that opened their offices and we basically walked around picking up candy in our costumes and uh, trying to be the ones to get the most uh, candy and get in for a drawing, you know, something as simple as, as a gift card, but it's a way to interact in a non-academic way um, and still have fun, uh, something that took like 20 minutes. Also, our group works really hard in, in leading uh, different fitness classes. So we have a, a running cl a club, or they run, yeah, running, um, Zumba, um, uh, HIIT workouts. Um, yeah, yeah, there's the other. Um, what else? Yeah, yes, body uh, weightlifting. Um, they, we also do volleyball tournaments and things like that. And then we also have um, activities to interact with uh, staff and faculty. So we had a uh, back to school picnic with flag football. So that's very competitive. Um, I will say the VM1s won this year. And then we have the very competitive uh, ice hockey. Uh, students versus faculty coming up next spring semester. So um, we have different different activities to try to lighten up the load. Um, our public health uh, club does something right before exams, uh, like provide free breakfast and things like that. You will not go hungry in vet school <laughs> right, at all. Right. I can tell you that. Um, or right before what we call dead week, which is the week before finals, um, we have therapy dogs that are just chilling in the library. So if you're like kind of freaking out about finals, you <laughs> go to the library and, and have fun with these dogs. So yeah, there's a lot of different activities. Yep. And the Gentle Doctor Cafe um, underwent a really nice renovation. Um, and it's really nice, isn't it? Um, there's fresh sandwiches that they make for you um, all day long. and uh, what else do they have? Soup and other, other small little coffee, things. Coffee, very important. Very good coffee, coffee, actually. <laughs> actual real coffee is very important, exactly. Um, and I would also say um, on clinics, you know, um, we're busy, but we're not that busy that we um, can't take care of our students. So, you know, it actually happens very often that the students are so um, motivated and so eager that, you know, they forget. <laughs> and we will tell them, 
go eat, okay, and then come back and then we'll do stuff again. And um, so it's it's a good relationship and, and we try and take care of each other. Uh, one other thing that's kind of unique here, which I haven't seen in other veterinary schools, although it may exist, is that we actually have a full-time uh, police officer here, uh, Lieutenant Sarah Jensen. And, and Sarah's job is, is, to, is to help with safety around the whole CVM complex. Um, and so she works with students, she works with staff and faculty on identifying um, uh, places where we can improve safety within our complex. She also does um, or organizes training in self-defense for students or for faculty and staff. Um, just a really unique aspect we have here that, that helps to create you know, that great environment for our students to learn and a great place for our, for our faculty and staff to work as well. I guess to add a little bit to that, it's that safety. Like we have access to the school throughout the whole day. Um, we have access to the clinical skills lab if I want to come in like late at night to come do that or like check in on my patients or anything like that. And we have round the clock security here. And so we always feel very safe because they're always walking around and things like that. So, I mean, this really is like our home for the next four years. And like, we're always improving. Like the dental doctor cafe is it's beautiful. We have our fish tank lobby. So it's always, Good. And yes. the dean just today approved the remodeling of the locker rooms. Nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. There you go. And we just got to pick out the color scheme yet. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> so, so that's a good. Uh, that actually segues into the next question really nicely, which is: so we do focus a lot on it, right? That's the goal. Uh, <laughs> we do focus a lot on improvements um, here. So maybe in the last, you know, a short. Um, or most recent pass through those projects looking forward, what's been the most exciting thing that's been added or is going to be added or whatever? What's the preview? Let's go around the table. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, man, spot. Uh, most excited definitely was the, the fitness room. That was a big, that, that made a big difference um, for students. Um, one of the things is we don't sleep enough, work out enough. Now we don't have an excuse. We can go get yes. a 15 minute workout. So uh, the fish tank lobby, so yeah. that is really yeah. a great place to sit around and relax. Yeah, and that's going to undergo a renovation. Yeah, again, sure. Yes, that's yep. right. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think the same. Uh, the Commons Cafe. Uh, that whole area is a nice, wide open area where students can now can congregate and have meals, but also after hours do the studying together in a more open area. Mm -hmm. Are we just talking wellness now, or are we talking no, anything? Anything, wellness? anything. Okay, well, there's been a lot going on in small animal. If you're into small animal, this is the place. I'm telling you, um, we're going to be one of the of three only in the U.S. having um, a, an SRT, you know, oncology um, stereotypic radiation, um, which is going to be really exciting and is going to drive caseload massively. Um, so we're going to have a really good program there. Um, also, excitingly for me, particularly, is that we've been doing clinical trials a lot more over the last two years, um, also with me coming here, but with oncology growing as well and internal medicine, we're now actually doing about 40 trials a year, which um, is massive for a relatively small school. And so we're very actively involved in clinical trials research, um, which you know you can all get involved in, in your last years or even in, in your um, uh, research scholarships if, if you want to do that. So I'll talk about one other exciting project which is which is a big deal not only for the College of Veterinary Medicine but also for um, the state of Iowa and, and animal agriculture and animals in general is we are in the process of, of building a new diagnostic lab, uh, the veterinary diagnostic lab, and we're in the planning process of that and hoping, hoping, Keep our fingers crossed to break ground here within the within the next 18 months. And you may ask, well, why is that important? Well, the veterinary diagnostic lab provides a service to uh, to uh, again animal agriculture and the small animal clients across the state, but it also provides a great uh, learning opportunity for our students. So when they're looking at at, at samples or necropsies that come in uh, to the diagnostic lab, it's just a, it's just a wonderful source of learning material in addition to providing that service um, uh, to society. So that project, if you were to come here to Iowa State, would probably at least be in the construction phase while you're here. In the meantime, though, we still have a very active diagnostic lab that's right, right now embedded within the College of Veterinary Medicine that, believe it or not, sees about 85,000 cases a year, uh, which is just simply amazing that that many cases actually roll through our diagnostic lab right now. 
um, and it's increasing all the time. So that's another exciting thing we have going on here uh, at Iowa State University. Awesome. So we do have some a student here from Florida. We have students from all over the place, but the, the student from Florida would like to know how cold does it really get in <laughs> Iowa? <laughs> It's uh, 75 degrees in here. Right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it gets pretty cold. <laughs> Don't know what else to tell you. Uh, if you haven't seen snow, you will definitely see snow and ice. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, I think what obviously I'm from Mexico, so that also has that. But I think what's different is you know, when you get to this part of the U.S., things are built for this, right? So, so it's not. I know at my house in Mexico, where my parents still live, it's not built. So when it's cold, it's cold. There's no heater. So I mean, honestly, the comment of anywhere you go into, you're going to be at that 70 plus degrees. Uh, so it's just that short time you're outside. Um, I think the weather, we're used to getting snow, so the snow plows are out almost instantly. So it's really not from a logistic. As a practitioner in Iowa, yes, it can be challenging in the field at times outside. But as a student, honestly, it's really not that bad. It's, you know, it's just it's the same with any other challenge as long as you prepare well for it. You know, the, the right clothing, you know, the right gloves, the right you know, a hat, um, it's, it's certainly bearable. Don't worry about it. You'll have classmates that'll square your way and, and help you or <laughs> laugh at you a little bit, but you'll be fine. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit more about the fourth year? How do we track? How do we, you know, kind of get students connected with who they're interested in and all of that? Perfect. I can talk a little bit about that since I'm going through the process right now. Um, so in, I think it was early October, we we told them what our preference was. So there's four different tracks that you can do. You can do small animal, you can do food production, you can do mixed animal. I forgot what the fourth one was. Oh, the equine, there you go. Equine is the fourth one. Uh, but in all honesty, we all, regardless of what track that you do, everybody is gonna do a little bit of all the species. Um, it's just what most of your time is gonna, what that additional time is gonna be dedicated towards. Um, so from our, my class, my class divided pretty evenly, actually. Um, I think we had like 27% um, production, 20 some percent in small animal, and like 15% in um, equine. So um, it's interesting to see that. And you, so anyways, in November, or at the end of October, then you do a selection for all your select for all your electives of what you want to preference, and then at the end, a couple of weeks ago, um, in the beginning of November, then you get what your rotation schedule looks like for the next year, and then they work with you as far as like if you want to move things around. Um, you get eight weeks off for the year um, of clinical rotations, and then after that, you just you, there are certain required classes you have to take, like I said, between all species, and then there's a certain amount of electives that you take, but it's only, and then in total, you only need 44 credit hours, so you still have a lot of extra time to do preceptorships and externships, so I have a lot of friends in this fourth year class right now that have done a lot of preceptorships and externships, um, and I know I'm looking at, they have study abroad programs too that you can do, so I'm looking at doing one of those programs for my fourth year. Yeah, and if I can add to that, so our program here at Iowa State uh, does not track per se. Uh, so all the first three years are the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you have your opportunities, like it was mentioned, to uh, select your specialties or areas of interest and get additional credits uh, totally at your choice to, to emphasize the areas that you have interest. And then the senior year, as Tracy mentions, out of all the credits, half of them are the same no matter what you pick. Um, and then you have the opportunity to take that other half in those areas that have interest. So again, our overall goal is to, prevent, uh, to, to create a practitioner who is well-rounded pretty much in all areas, but yet still have that flexibility where if you have interest in cats, you can still get more cats. If you're interested in pigs, you can still get more pigs. Uh, if you're interested in oncology, you can get more oncology. Uh, whatever your interest is, you, you, know, you do have that flexibility. I kind of want to add to that, not just for fourth year, but just overall vet med experience. You have a lot of opportunity to take electives. So the, uh, in, in Iowa State, you pay the same amount of tuition no matter how many credit hours that you have. 
So I don't know if it's smart or not, but I like learning. So I have taken like two electives every single semester since I've been here. I've taken things that I'm interested in, such as animal welfare, um, behavioral medicine, infectious diseases, Spanish for veterinarians, um, production animal. I'm going to take cardiology next semester because I want to learn a little bit more in depth about that. So like you have a lot of opportunity to seek the areas in the education that you want to. Um, people say, oh, you can't add electives. You can definitely, I've, like I said, I've taken two to three electives every single semester. And I'm staff and president this semester, so it's possible. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so, Dr. Allenspot, you had said if this is if you want to do small animal medicine, this is the place to be. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I think a lot of people know about you know we have the reputation for good surgeons, good you know large animal vets, yeah. but can you talk a little bit about the small animal side? Yeah, um, we have um, in the last, I think, four years or so, a little bit before I came on, um, increased faculty to six, um, which is a really big group of medicine faculty, actually, in comparison to other programs. And um, it helps because it, it basically means that everybody has their own research um, and clinical interests. And so we have um, people who are um, building up a program or um, are already doing it basically in um, urinary tract diseases for small animal medicine. So we have um, laser lithotripsy, which is um, when you basically with a laser blast away the stones in the bladder, um, which is a really cool technique that not many um, are actually able to offer. And you know, our students, if, if they have a case, they can do it. And so it's, it's really pretty cool. Um, we have um, a lot of expertise in, in gastroenterology with Dr. Jurgens um, and myself as well. Um, we do a lot of research with that and we do a lot of gastrointestinal endoscopy. So if you're into endoscopy, definitely this is the place mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to be doing it for sure if you come to small animal medicine. Um, we also have um, a feline medicine um, a special interest people. So um, we have a lot going on there as well. Um, so there's, um, and then there's interest in sort of autoimmune diseases, um, immune mediated thrombocytopenia as well. We do a lot together with critical care as well. Critical care, by the way, is another area that has hugely improved over the last two to three years. We now have a fully operating ICU, which is big, as you can imagine. Um, and um, it's actually really quite busy as well these days. It's 24 seven um, operated, has techs in there, always has interns in there, also always has um, a faculty backup. Um, and uh, we're gonna be starting a, a program in critical care residency programs fairly soon as well. And so that's, uh, that's all connected. And so it's really good opportunities in small animal. I kind of want to throw in a plug too for exotic medicine. We do yeah. have, because I have ferrets. I mean, that's the only way I know is because I have ferrets, I've interacted a lot with the um, exotic uh, veterinarian here. We have two, Dr. Saperano and Dr. Olds. And so um, they see a lot of cases here too, between ferrets and rabbits and guinea pigs. I have a lot of classmates that are interested in exotic medicine. So it's kind of cool to have that opportunity here. So like I said, you just have a wide variety of species. Whatever you want to learn, you will, you will find it here. Yep, absolutely. If I can add a couple things, I, I mentioned earlier that we're the oldest college of veterinary medicine in North America, but, but actually our hospitals are brand new. Yes. Uh, they're all built within the last five to six years, both our small animal hospital and our large animal hospital are, are, are basically brand new and just fabulous facilities. Um, the other thing, um, which you may not know, is we also have a satellite clinic, which is located in the capital of Iowa in Des Moines. Um, so 24, I believe it's 24 seven emergency clinic. Mm -hmm. And then also some of our specialists go down there on, um, on a rotations to, to see specialty cases. So it's another opportunity to see caseloads or cases, I should say, in a different setting. So another unique uh, teaching opportunity for our, in this case on the small animal side. Uh, so one, one last quick question that I'm gonna have you guys sign off by saying what your favorite thing about Ames slash maybe Iowa State is. Um, but before we get to that, I wanted to give you some time to like you know, prep. Um, can you talk a little bit about students who are interested in getting their master's or maybe even a PhD while they're here? So kind of the dual degree programs. Yeah, so can you talk about that as well? Um, yeah, the dual degree program, uh, that is something um, is, is interested and, uh, and also they're looking for supporting um, for the sandwich program. 
So I don't think they still have anything formally approved for some, some of the courses that are still under uh, uh, discussion. Uh, but there are, uh, as I am aware, there are at least there are two students per year that are taking um, either MS or uh, PhD, uh, DVM PhD program. Um, so they are quite quite good in managing um, uh, both coursework and also uh, research. Um, so probably um, we can arrange to keep in contact with those guys if mm -hmm. those are interested in knowing that uh, yeah. in great detail. Yeah. Um, so, so one of the things maybe to uh, advertise to a degree about that program for the combined PhD and and vet course is actually that if you manage to actually um, produce a thesis usually a couple of years after vet school, then you will be paid back all of your tuition for vet school, which That's is right. quite an incentive, mm -hmm. but it's also a hard program. Mm -hmm. So there's not many people taking it up. Um, I'm actually right now in discussion with one um, student who wants to do it. Um, and it, it's, it's gonna be a challenge to make it all work because a PhD usually is also four years, right? Yeah. And so um, it, it's hard to do it in, in five to six years all together, but it's doable. So if, if anybody's actually interested, we can certainly get more information out. Yeah, and there's in every class there is. I have several classmates yeah. that are doing a PhD in a uh, dual master's program. Yeah. So like I said, it, yeah, it's very doable. Just working with that and that. Yeah. And Dr. Ramirez, maybe, I, I think we also have uh, an opportunity for students to do DVM MPH programs with, correct. Uh, with Minnesota or Iowa? Uh, University of Iowa, okay, which, which, which is one of the other universities here. You can do a, a master's in public health at the same time and graduate. By the time you get your DVM degree, you will have both degrees, the DVM and the MPH. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so before we get to the, uh, the best things about living in Ames, and uh, being here at Iowa State, I did want to, if I can just kind of put in a plug real quick here um, for some of the upcoming events that we have going on. So um, in the, the spring semester, so right after the holiday break, um, we'll have a financial aid information session. Um, we'll do a, a student panel like you guys had tonight uh, with faculty and students. Um, we're going to redo our Facebook Live tour so that you can see some of those new places that uh, were talked about tonight. Um, and then we do have some days where if you're you know, really very interested in coming here in person, um, so January 26th, March 30th, and April 6th, we're hosting preview days here. Um, so check our website and watch our emails for invitations to all of those. So now as we, we sign off here, can you guys tell us what you love about this place? <laughs> Who wants to start? Oh, there's too many things to name. <laughs> no, <laughs> just one, one just one. one I know, right? <laughs> um, I just, I absolutely love the town, the size of the town. You know, it's, to me, it's, I come from a big city, and so to me, it's just the perfect size, and the ratio of students and faculty is just perfect. So I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, probably the same same reason. I mean, I grew up in a big city and I uh, lived in again in the UK, another big city, Liverpool. Uh, it's a small town, and you can you know um, wider roads. That is something great. Yes. <laughs> I'm great people. I'm students really. I love uh, you know teaching, and it is it is a great community. Since you already said people, um, <laughs> I think one of the other is safety. Um, yeah. I think you yeah. know I have family and raising a daughter and two sons, um, I've always felt very safe that they could be out any time of the day or night and I don't have to worry about them. Um, it's a very safe environment, uh, very friendly environment. Um, and it's just, as a parent, that always makes me feel good that I don't have to worry. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Um, I, I think um, I can certainly speak to some of these experiences as well. I've, I've been in London for 11 years before coming here, so it's a bit of a shock. <laughs> uh, but a good one. <laughs> um, people are really nice and, and people actually mean it. And um, I think that's just extremely important for, you know, for your work and for um, relationships with students um, and, and other faculties. And so it's a good place to be. And, and I certainly would, uh, would ditto everything that's said. Um, I, th I think the other, you know, unique thing, or actually it's, it's not necessarily unique, but, but certainly very attractive is just, just being part of that college community, 
Um, and so uh, I'm a big sports fan. So going to, to the football games or men's and women's basketball games, something that I've taken advantage of in the first 60 days here, it's just really fun. And, and it's, it's fun. It's fun in not kind of that, uh, that, uh, that way where sometimes college sports is just overwhelming. It just seems like a family atmosphere that everybody's, it's, it's a chance to have fun and, and, and root for your team and uh, interact and network with friends and family. So, so that's just something I've really enjoyed in, in, in my short time here. So we can, we can go, go Cyclones, right? <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you to our, our Dean and his friends here um, for a great panel. I learned a lot, definitely. So um, be looking out for those next kind of set of virtual things coming up. And as always, if you have questions or anything like that, uh, please let me know. You can contact me and I can uh, share the question with our panel here um, and they will hopefully follow up and, and give you some gr more great information. So thank you, everybody. We will sign off now. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.